It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Coach Garen Higgins, who is the head football coach for the Emporia State University Hornets. And Coach, just to go straight to the lead, let's not bury this at all. 150-plus wins overall as a head coach, but it's your 100th victory recently at Emporia State, a 38-0 victory over Northeastern State. Let's start right there. Congratulations on winning 100 at your alma mater. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know, uh, every time I think of that, it's like, hey, we're not done yet. Now I want to, we want to keep, we want to keep winning some games. And I told, uh, before we got on the air, I said, I didn't even realize it was going to be a hundred until Don uh, mentioned something to me about two days earlier, uh, that it was going to be a hundred wins at Emporia State. Um, so yeah, it was good. Uh, I tell you what was special about it is, again, I said this uh, after the Northwest win is, I just had so many players that I've coached here. Uh, being here uh, for, I'm, I'm going on my 16th season, uh, and and to, to be able to get text messages from guys that I haven't heard from in a while is, that's that's that that what means a great deal, or that means a great deal to me. And uh, those guys, a lot of those guys have been a part of those wins, been a part of those good wins, uh, foundation laying wins uh, that we got here uh, a ways back. So uh, it was, it was, it was, that was what was nice about it. And then to do it at, of course, at your alma mater and to be at a place as long as I've been at it and, and be at a place that I love. Coach, that is fantastic. And again, congratulations. You mentioned the Northwest Missouri win that came the week before, and that was a win that put a number of years and even decades of frustrations in the rear view mirror, 33, 13, the victory over the Bearcats. Talk a little bit about that win as well. Well, that was a, I mean, it's a, Big win for a lot of different reasons. At first, uh, you know, we, of course, felt like we, we came close the year before and it kept us out of the playoffs. Um, and and the second thing is just, yeah, we hadn't beat them in 29 years. That's a long time. I mean, nobody on my team was born. Uh, and and uh, I've had a lot of good teams that I've went to Maryville with and, and came away with a bad loss. And, I mean, a bad loss, I meaning we got beat, we got whipped. Uh, so – that was that was what was great about it, and then again, just with the players that I got, that was a good win for them. Um, you know that that game was two weeks ago. I kind of, to be honest with you, uh, moved on. You know, like and talk to the players about, hey, we've done what we we're supposed to do. We're going to close the book on that, and now we're going uh, on to the next week and and maintaining our focus, maintaining our. Uh, composure, remembering the the one of the things we talk about is earmuffs and blinders. You know, quit a lot of people pat you on the back. We're only three and out. We haven't done anything. All right, we haven't done anything. We won a second game. We won a third game. Uh, it's, uh, it's a long season. We got a lot a lot of things that we still uh, got in front of us, and we got to take it one week at a time. We're visiting with Coach Garen Higgins here on Midwest Sports Net as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach Higgins, you've been on the channel with us a number of times here long enough. I want to give you the, the title friend of the channel, if that's all right. And I will no then, as a friend, ask you one more question about the past. And then we'll we'll look look past that just a little bit. Three okay. for this season, but I had the opportunity to see a tribute that uh, Don Weiss and I'm sure others put together for you on the Emporia State website and uh, a tribute from players and staff that had uh, given their congratulations for making it to 100 victories there at Emporia State. It was worth the watch, and I'm glad I watched it to the end, too, to even get to see what your parents had to say. That was fantastic. So, Coach, talk about that just a little bit. Uh, you're going to bring that up. See, I get, you know, for a guy that coaches his guys pretty hard, things like that, uh, you know, I start becoming a little soft, Okay. But no, I, I uh, it was it was awesome. It was great. It was, uh, I, I guess, and I've said this a lot that just uh, it's always about the players. And it's about you know former coaches that have coached here with me, uh, been through trials and tribulations, uh, been through great wins, playoff wins. Um, you know, I think in coaching, it's about wins are awesome. But I'm done with the. When I was younger, wins and losses define. I, I let it define who I was as a person. Uh, that's not do, now. I still take them losses pretty hard. There might be some people that might be laughing at me saying that, but it's not going to define who I am uh, as a man. And and uh, I think that video just 
help me again prove that fact that I want to have a relationship with my players when when they leave here. Uh, not that I talk to them all the time or every day, but you know, just uh, yeah, you know, I had the opportunity to call those guys or reach out to those guys uh, through text or calling them just the, and thanking them, you know, personally. And uh, there's still a couple of those guys I still got to get a hold of that I haven't talked to in a long time, and I look forward to to visiting with them because it's just I want them to be successful in life, uh, and and I just hope I've made an impact. If it's just a little one. Uh, an impact uh, on their lives and made them not only, yeah, I wanted them to be a great football player when they were here, but I also wanted them to leave here uh, with the understanding of what it is to be a good man, uh, to be a, a good husband and a good father. So that's, uh, that's, that meant, that meant the world to me. And to end it with my mom and dad, uh, you know, probably put the, uh, icing on the cake really right there. I'm an only child. So they're not going to say everything they're going to say is going to be great things. All right. <laughs> now it is right. Well, coach. And, and again, that, that made it for me too. I was glad I stuck around and watched it all the way to the end, the end, because that was fantastic. All right. Let's, let's look at where we are right now then. And I know we could talk about Braden Gleason and this offense all day, because I mean, just the, the numbers he continues to put up. I want to ask you about the defense because this is a defense now through three games that has given up less than eight points a game, including, if you'll let me mix metaphors here, pitching a shutout for the first time in five years. Talk about your defense a little bit. Yeah, I think they're playing really well. I think uh, the the huge part about it is uh, they're getting turnovers, and that's been, you know, the, the turnover margin, the turnover has been huge for us, ball security, you know, and uh, uh, they're, they're giving us those opportunities to go put points on the board. Uh, it helps with keeping the momentum on our side. Uh, I thought they did a, a lot better job of stopping the run last week. Um, you know, we know that we're going to face better offenses, and that's not to take anything away uh, from what they've done. But we also understand that we can we can be a lot better. We still can be a lot better, and we need to be a lot better as we get through the because we're getting ready to get into the gauntlet now uh, of our schedule, and it's going to be a slugfest. So those guys are going to have to continue to play at a high level. All right, Coach, then without giving away any state secrets, uh, family weekend this weekend. You're back at home. You take on the University of Central Oklahoma. Can you preview this weekend's game? Yeah, uh, first, uh, it's a, you know, of course, me being from Oklahoma, uh, you know, having UCO uh, come up here, you know, we have, there's a lot of players that we have on our roster from Oklahoma. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for that program. Um, got a lot of respect for Coach Doral. I got a former player of mine that coaches uh, with Coach Doral. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I, I think that uh, it's going to be a battle and we're going to have to play. Uh, I, honestly, I believe it's going to be our toughest test, to be quite honest with you, uh, up to this point. I really do. And, you um, you know, with family day, I know we're going to have a, a – should have a good crowd. I, I feel like we haven't played at home like all year. I know we did the first game Thursday night, but that seems so long ago that, man, it's going to be – it's almost going to feel like a first home game. So it'll be nice to get back into the confines of Welsh Stadium, and, and hopefully we do with it being family day. We have a big turnout. We're going to need the crowd. We're going to need their support. Uh, looks like we're going to have a beautiful day. Uh, and, and I think our guys, they really enjoy playing in front of the home crowd. I, I think we have a good product. I think UCO has a good product, and it should be uh, a great football game. All right, Coach. Well, then success to you all this weekend. Family day ahead, and the folks who are Hornets fans, this is a good time to be an ESU Hornet fan. Uh, definitely Coach Garen Higgins having won his 100th game there with the program. Coach, thank you for taking time with us today here on the Summit on Midwest Sports Now. We appreciate that, and always appreciate you coming on the channel with us and talking football and more. You bet. It was good to see you. It's been a while. I always appreciate it when you have me on. Thank you, sir.